Hello, welcome back to the Elementally Ching. Um, today I'm here by the Wonderland Pond, uh, which is currently inactive. It doesn't have its waterfall going, and so it's the still lake. And uh, in our, our meditating frog friend holding space while we, were, while literally our water is being drained. You know, in this in the I Ching, this is Jinky 47, the hexagram 47, which is uh, the drain, the drained lake. Because it's the lake over the water. It's like all the water's flowing and flooding out of this of this container, the still waters. In the Jinkies, it moves from oppression as the shadow to transmutation as the gift and transfiguration as the city. And we've been in this key for a few days now, and it's been really interesting to watch and map the alchemy as it occurs in my own body. You know, we're in the ring of alchemy right now. There's a very cellular level. My body is contemplating and, you know, working on this cellular transmutation level, moving through some big transitions that have occurred. You know, and last week, the fire and water were just, and continue to rage on our planet and in our country, my country and in, in the United States, just the, the power of the fires when they are out of balance and, and also the natural balance of alchemy, of diverse elements opposing one another, moving through their, their cycles and as, as, you know, sending love and compassion to all beings that are being affected by the hurricanes right now, being affected by the wildfires right now and all the animals and the plants that are going through this, this tumultuous time with us. You know, and that's what segues us into, from that confusion of all this chaos of the diverse elements playing their game out, and now into oppression, into, into transmutation, into this alchemical art that's understanding that the sensations of the universe right now, for me, physically, are pointing me inward, crawling, and oppression feels like this crawling inward, and this deep, you know, constriction. The dissatisfaction with our own half-heartedness, it's just this swamp, right? The, the joyous lake and its detriment is the swamp, the murky swamp. But I truly have faith, I truly have faith that every moment is an opportunity for accomplishment. Every challenge is a greater fuel for my liberating intent. So to understand that when the sensations draw me in like that, to follow that current, not to resist that. No, I need to not be oppressed. I need to not be depressed. I need to, you know, I need to be something I'm not. No, I'm feeling this experience. So I, f I have the experience of fully feeling, coming inward, coming into that core, because I'm truly just satisfied with my own half-heartedness. Oppression is a powerful subject and one beyond my scope as, as an individual, as a white man, as, a, a rel is, as completely prosperous, uh, not necessarily on a bank account level, but I know how gifted and blessed my life is. But I do know where oppression, what oppression feels like on my internal, my own experiential level. And I hope that everyone has a dialogue with their own experience of this oppression. For me, what it has continued to point me to is if I'm dissatisfied with this situation, with how my life is playing out, with how the government and the economy and, and, and all of these things are playing out, to take responsibility completely for my part to play within this divine drama of life. Even as this construction is like blaring, like drilling, the noises are like drilling into my head, and yet here I am. I've chosen this moment. I've magnetized this experience in order to transmute, to, trans to evolve, to to allow the vitality of my commitment to the moment. My vitality emerges from my commitment to the moment. Can I take every sensation as an opportunity to eat the distraction, to eat the immaturity, to eat all of the stress, to eat the intense hatred for intolerance, to, to, to eat my qualms about, about the natural disasters as they ravage the land or are they actually divinely orchestrated to help heal 
certain areas of our consciousness, certain areas of the planet to bring biodiversity and native species back to the land? Can we be in right relation with water and fire inside ourselves so that we can be of greater service to this harmony, this symphony that's occurring? So that we can be witness to this great transfigured light, the bliss of our devotion, of my devotion to life. You know, the, the lake is elation. It's, it's, this, it's this expression of life, of the joy of life. Every being, every animal comes to sip from the waters. You know, and this, is, this is the lake above the roaring rapids or maybe draining out into that river. Maybe we're leaking our cauldron. So instead of fighting the oppression outside of ourselves, facing the place where we are leaking our energy, our space, we need to come back into wholeness here, full responsibility, and claim any of these energies, not into their addictions of, oh, it's always over here. Claim that energy to eat, to be, let that be fuel for greater love in this universe. That's for me where these tiny mutations, these transmutations build and build and build my capacity to be, to aspire to that rainbow light of that Padmasambhava truth, that the primordial field of enlightened intent. That's fantastic to drink in to claim that and as many parts of my cells that are ready to claim that, but to be realistic around the cells that are resistant to living love fully, to living my vitality fully and completely, to, to, to claiming the, the, the accomplishment that is available to us. You know, when we relax, joyously relax into the truth of our being. My teacher, my Dzogchen teacher and, and dear friend was sharing that joyous relaxation is true cellular healing. How perfect for this key. Joyous relaxation. And I don't mean be apathetic to the needs of our universe, to the callings of the values that we stand for, but to be mindful of what game we're playing when we fight that oppression from outside. There is something calling for our attention inside. You know, we have to go into that poison and see it fully, completely. This is my path. This is my aspiration for myself. And I hope anyone that is inspired to take our pain, to worship that pain, to look directly into the heart of these dragons of our life, of this oppression, this deep constriction in our own being, our dissatisfaction with what's not working in life. You keep waking up with the same addictive patterns. You keep waking up with the with the a heaviness. You know, it's not bad, it's not wrong, but let's eat it. Let's use that fuel to transmute something of greater love, of greater vitality, of greater dynamism, of greater commitment to the moment as it is. The elation, communicating with our elation in life. Om Mani Petal Hong. All beings discover the life, the love, the freedom that exists, the liberating freedom, the groundless ground of who we are is always moving, is always changing. In each moment, we have the opportunity to choose again, to choose with fresh consciousness to exactly what's occurring. Stillness of the lake in the mind. Be still so that space opens her doorway of truth. And then be the body of water to be that dynamic flow, constantly changing, constantly transmuting, constantly becoming anew. That for me is what this hexagram represents, stillness of heaven, of that lake in the, in the upper trigram, stillness of mind, and the flow of love, the devotion through body. Thanks for joining me on these little flows. It's a great opportunity for me to just share from the authenticity of who I am right now and I really appreciate all your support, all your views. I, I, I want to inspire more conversations like these. Suppression is a hard conversation to have. So maybe if you feel inspired, you can comment and share what is your view of working with oppression, of working with these challenges in this day and age, because it needs all of our voices. Never forget the programming partner to, to this key is grace the involution of grace.
there's a video that uh, that Theo created some music to with Richard's words, and and I created some mandalas. So that's also going to be shared um, today as an honor to transmutation and uh, many blessings on your chat, on your path, on our work, on our play, on this ferocious roller coaster ride that is life. May we use each each sensation as fuel to greater liberation, to be natural in our bodies, to be joyously relaxing, even amidst the crazy intensity of the transmutation as it occurs.